Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, there's been a concern that the war may spread further, perhaps to Moldova. It borders Ukraine, it has a population of three and a half million. And just like inside Ukraine, in Moldova, Russia supports separatists who control a breakaway region. The buildings here are starting to get very, very Soviet. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, there's been a concern that the war may spread further, perhaps to Moldova. The Moldovan government has tried to impose Romanian as the only official language. It borders Ukraine, it has a population of three and a half million. And just like inside Ukraine, in Moldova, Russia supports separatists who control a breakaway region. And the situation in Moldova is under ever-increasing scrutiny. In early May, the Times quoted a Ukrainian military source saying, we believe the Kremlin has already taken the decision to attack Moldova. We are just 25 kilometers away from southern Ukraine. Two kilometers away from here is an actual war happening. Control over the south of Ukraine is another passage to the Transnistria region. Today I'm starting one of the most dangerous trips I've ever done, if not the most dangerous one. Just so you know, Moldova had its airspace closed, so when I tried to buy the flight for this trip, I couldn't buy a flight direct to Moldova, so I had to buy a flight to Romania and then figure out any other kind of transportation to Moldova. Now flights have resumed, not, not all of them, but some of them, but still today I am arriving in Romania and then I will have to take a night bus to Moldova. In fact, uh, the plan of the Kremlin was to first go for Ukraine and then they had revealed plans that if the invasion of Ukraine was successful, they would try to take over Moldova, or at least one part of Moldova. Countries are not recommending traveling right now to Moldova, given the real risk of war in this country. I will give you more information, more background, but first, let's get to Romania. I flew to Yash, a city near the Moldovan and Ukrainian border. The plane was full of Ukrainians who were returning home for the first time after the start of the war. I arrived at 1 a.m. in Romania and headed to the bus station. However, nobody knew the existence of such bus. There, I met Alina, a Ukrainian girl who was also taking the same bus aside to Chisinau. We were finally able to find the bus and made it to the Moldovan border. Thanks to Alina's translation skills, I was able to understand the proceedings to cross the borders, so shout out to her. The bus was packed with people and I couldn't sleep well. With the sunrise, we arrived to Chisinau the capital city of Moldova, at 6 a.m. I just arrived to Moldova after this night was, it's 6 a.m. and I just contacted my hotel and apparently they are letting me check in early, so that's nice. And here's the main road where I should be taking the bus. My first impressions of Chisinau is that it's very, very green. There's many green spaces, trees everywhere, and there's like a lot of space between buildings, which is great. I like that. And I don't know, so far, so good. Check my room in Chisinau. Here I am. In fact, hotels and hostels in Chisinau are quite expensive compared to other places in the region. So I was very lucky to find this one for 30 euros and it has breakfast included, it's quite nice. Now I'm gonna rest. I've been awake for more than 24 hours. I really needed to sleep. I was, I mean, I, I just laid in bed and I passed out for real. I slept like for about two hours, now I'm back in the street. Moldova used to be one of the former USSR republics. It attained its independence 30 years now, more or less. It has had a, quite a complicated history. However, it is this fact that it was a Soviet country that Chisinau, the capital city, there's people saying it is the worst city in Europe to visit because there's nothing and it has this uh, very Soviet architecture. We'll check now if that's true or not. By the way, it's very, very, very hot today. It's the beginning of June and today I think we're reaching 28 degrees Celsius, so yeah.
some of that Soviet legacy can be seen in the streets. Most of the streets are named after famous Soviet writers, historians, big personalities of the Soviet era. And in fact, here in Chisinau, it's kind of like a 50-50 when it comes to language. 50% of the people normally use Romanian to communicate and the other half Russian. And you actually see both languages in the streets. It depends on where you check, the percentage is different. By the way, there is also debate on whether the language they speak here is Moldovan or Romanian. People say Moldovan it's a dialect of Romanian, some more proud Moldovans say it's just the Roman language. The cultural and language division in Moldova has also contributed to a political division in terms of whether Moldova should be leaning more towards the West or towards Russia. Right now, because of the invasion of Ukraine, government has taken a very strong uh, stance in favor of the West. However, this has infuriated many pro-Russian citizens of the country. <laughs> This right here is Stefan Tilmare, which was one of the main heroes of Moldova back in the Middle Ages. In fact, the main street you see here and the park which is behind me are named after him. He was a very important character for this country. Ever since independence, the Moldovan government has tried to impose Romanian as the only official language which has, of course, infuriated many citizens that only speak Russian, and this Russian has always been their first language. Chisinau is often considered the green capital of Europe and I think this is quite accurate. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's just so many green spaces. Every single street has trees or spaces like this, vegetation, and it kind of gives the city a more happy look and a more like livable look. I'm really enjoying this city. And I think it's because of this specific detail. just visited the National Museum of Moldova. Here you can learn a little bit about the history of this country, which is quite interesting, actually. I mean, it has a lot, a lot of history, many empires, many uh, countries trying to take over this region, and it only cost me 50 cents. So, nice idea if you're coming to Chisinau. I just been to the house. He was a writer, a very famous writer from the 19th century here uh, in 
the Russian world and he lived in Chisinau and here's his uh, actual home where he lived here. Uh, women approached me and started talking to me in Russian which I I know a little bit but not too much and she explained me the whole place she was very kind she spent like 30 minutes straight uh, explaining me who he was all the things in the museum and she gave me some directions to go to a church so i'm very grateful her name was uh Ludmila. so yeah i guess uh if you ever come to chichina please come to this place because the people are so nice in general in, in moldova people are being so nice to me and i'm so happy for that and this this woman was just excellent wow The buildings here are starting to get very, very Soviet. I think this is the new part that was created after uh, the Soviet times or during the Soviet times. I am now getting to a memorial. I don't know what it is about, but we'll figure it out now. There are many statues remembering some important years of the Russian and Soviet army against the fascists, I think. This is a memorial to the Great Patriotic War, that's the name the Soviet Union and the Russians put to the Second World War. In this war they defeated the Nazis and they, they did not only do that, they also conquered many many other lands. One of those lands, one of those territories they conquered was Moldova. It used to be part of Romania, but after the Second World War it was ceded to the Soviet Union and it was formed the People's Socialist Republic of Moldova. Then it would take around 45 years for it to become independent for once, but it would never come back to Romania, at least for now. I am now entering the main refugee camp here in Moldova. It is called Mold Expo, and this used to be a center for expositions. Now it is a refugee camp and it's actually holding most of the refugees that are coming from Ukraine to Moldova. As you may know, Moldova is very, very close to Ukraine and hence it has received many refugees, about 400 to 500,000, which means one quarter of the population of Moldova. So of course this has had a very big impact in the country and they are trying their best to receive them all. The thing is, 
uh, does Moldova have all the means to do this? Uh, can Moldova really like hold one quarter of its population as a refugee here in, in their country? So it turns out they are doing quite well. However, of course, it's been challenging for a country that itself is one of the poorest in the continent. It is very, very bizarre to find this Lenin mausoleum just next to a refugee camp, a Ukrainian refugee camp. There are many countries that have deleted, destroyed most of the statues from the Soviet era, but it turns out this one has not been uh, trust yet. It's still there, right to a, a Ukrainian refugee camp. And I don't know, I find it just very, very, very weird. These people have a history of suffering under the guy that was the first leader of the Soviet Union. What you see there is the entrance to the place where they are actually living. I am not going to film inside there because of obvious reasons, but yeah, that's the place. When Moldova was in its process of getting its independence, many Russian-speaking regions rebelled against this because they were fearing that Moldova would join Romania and they would lose their privilege of being able to speak Russian and they would have to be forced to speak Romanian. A very famous example of this was Transnistria that actually fought a war against Moldova in order to get its independence from Moldova. Nowadays, uh, Transnistria is a de facto state, but it's not recognized by any other country. However, this is not where I'm going today. However, there was also another region which broke away from Moldova for the same reason. Today, we've come to that place. Welcome to Gagausia. Right now, I'm walking through the Lenin Street, which is the main road that crosses the city. Here it says Afghanistan, but this is like a tribal to those who fought in the Afghanistan war when the Soviet Union tried to conquer Afghanistan. Sili, popcorn, popcorn, ah, mais, da, mais, you see that, 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 what Dia saw was the National Museum of History. Shout out to Georgi, who was my guide. And although he gave me the tour in Russian, I could understand most of it, I guess. So it was very interesting. You could see many of the uh, Gogol's traditions, history, even the things they used for, for cultivating the grapes because here the wine is very, very precious and it's quite nice. The Gagos people are an ethnic group which come from far away in Central Asia. They are a Turkic group, which means they speak a language which is very, very similar to Turkish. In fact, they just told me they can understand 100% of what they say uh, in Turkey. People here do not speak uh, Romanian at all. They speak either Russian or Gagos and they've had a hard time 
with Moldova since after the collapse of the Soviet Union was a very big uh, idea of rejoining Romania and Moldova into one country. The thing is, if this was to happen, the people here feared that their right to speak their language and their right to uh, keep Russian as the main official language and Gogols too would disappear. That is why they proclaimed their independence. After long talks, Gogosia reunited with Moldova with the only condition that they would remain an autonomous region and that they would keep their own culture and language. You can see the map of Rogozia, here you can see some traditions they have here, the dances, the dresses, everything. The guys working at the museum were very curious, like they didn't know where I was from. I told them I was from Spain and they immediately asked me if I was Catalan if I, and if I wanted the independence of Catalonia. They also wanted to know like how was the situation now. I told them what I knew. And I used that opportunity to ask them back whether if they want Gogosia to be independent or not. And they said, right now they don't, but if uh, Moldova reunites with uh, Romania or uh, they try to suppress the autonomy of Gogosia, they will try to ask Russia for help for a referendum. So yeah, I guess that's the situation here. just 25 kilometers away from southern Ukraine while here everything seems calm just a few kilometers away from here there is an actual war happening and actual people fighting and dying it is weird just to be so close and yet so far from the situation this is meant to be the market but it's not close because it's Sunday. That was the end of my trip to Moldova. Then I went back to Romania and took a flight to Barcelona. Thank you very much for staying until the end. I am moving to Southeast Asia in a month, so expect videos from the other side of the world. Thank you again and see you soon.